Hey everyone, welcome to another drawing tutorial. The idea for today's tutorial is inspired by Liz Watkins' art. So a few days ago, I was at the Urban Sketches blog browsing around and I saw some of her sketches. So this is one of them. And this is her style. Notice that she did not use pen and ink to draw the outlines for every element in the scene. Here for the wooden blocks, there are no outlines. It's just watercolor washes and those black dots, I believe they are pen and ink lines. This tree here on the left side, again, no outlines. It's just a watercolor wash. For the wooden planks here, it's a mixture of pen and ink and watercolor wash but not all are in outline. She only drew the outline for selected areas, for selected ages. For this bench here, the top watercolor wash, but the bottom of the benches, the feet, they were drawn with pen and ink. You can see the background, the person at the cafe, the bench, pen and ink. But for this particular cafe, this area here, this area here, it's just watercolor wash and the people here, pen and ink. So this is pretty nice. I find this style really beautiful and her colors, her use of color is wonderful. This is a lovely style. I like it. Let's check out some of her other sketches. So this is her blog lineandwash.co.uk and for this particular sketch you can see not all the elements are drawn with outlines like the windows here, not the window frame. It's not totally drawn with outlines and her pen and ink art is also very lovely. See how she overlays subjects over one another. And here for this column, you see, this is not drawn with outline. And this statue here, it's not drawn with outline, but the bottom of the statue, the details, they were drawn with outline. And this statue is drawn with outline, but not this statue. So the look and feel is quite different. The roofs here, no outlines, but the details, the fans, the railings, they were drawn with pen and ink here as well. So some buildings they were drawn with outlines but some they were not. And here you see some of the clothes hanging here on the railing. The clothes they were not outlined. But the railing they are on outlined. You can see more of her art on her website as well as on her blog. The links to them are in the video description below. All right, let's take a look at the photo, the reference photo that I will be using today for the tutorial. You can download this photo from the link in the video description below. So this is our city scene, a street scene here in Singapore. Now, I have to decide which are the buildings I want to draw with outlines and which are the ones, um, which are the elements I do not want to draw with outlines. So from what I can see, I'm going to have this building here, this one and this one, not drawn with outlines, but this building here, I think I shall draw it with outline for this part here. For the people, the pedestrian lights, lampposts, the cars below, all these details here. It's very difficult for me to paint with watercolor because the details, they are very small. So for them, I'm going to draw them with pen and ink. The scene is actually quite complicated because there are a lot of shapes and diagonal lines. So I'm going to use a pencil to draft out the proportion of the buildings first. For complicated scenes, I do use pencil sometimes to mark out areas so that I can get the proportion right. But later on when I draw, I'm going to use pen and ink. The pencil laid out. The pencil layout is done, so let's start painting. I'm gonna use ultramarine and paint the sky first. 
I'm going to make sure that the shape of the sky is correct. So make sure that the edges near the buildings they are at the correct. They are they have the correct shape. I'm using a large scroll brush so that I don't have to worry too much about the details. And now let's fit this part here into the white of the paper. This is a little bit too much water. So let the paint flow down. This sketchbook that I'm using, by the way, is the Hanamule watercolor sketchbook. Painting a sketch like this does require more planning because you need to know where to draw the pen and ink lines and where not to. Now I'm painting the windows on this building in front. I counted seven stories. So let me get the shape of the windows right. This particular building has three, three faces. So there's one face here, two face here, and three face here. So you need to get the angles of the lines right. The bottom of the building here, it's very dark. So I'm going to paint the shadow areas here. This mix is a mix of ultramarine and burnt sienna. For the building on the left side, I'm going to use... Um, I'm not sure what this color is actually. The reason why I don't know what this color is is because some of the paint that I squeeze into the pan, I haven't been using them for a long time. I cannot remember the color uh, that is there. So this part here... Let me just paint this whole thing here in shade. And it looks like this building on the left side is casting some shadows onto the ground. So let's just paint the shadows across all the way. And now I want to paint this building. I'm going to use rose matter or permanent rose. Paint it like this, make sure I get the shape right. The shape is very important. This part here is particularly important because you need to get the shape of the building right. If not, the building is not going to look accurate. So it really helps if you have a very sharp brush or you can use a synthetic brush for the details. Notice how when I put the ultramarine onto the olive green, ultramarine pushes the colors out. I'm going to paint some background here as well. Just make it very light. I'm starting to understand what's going on right now. I should have drawn some lines before I started painting. So for example, this van here, I should have drawn this van before I started sketching. Now if you draw some lines before you started painting, it would actually help you mark out certain areas. So while waiting for the wash to dry, I'm going to draw on the areas that are already dry. Now when you draw with pen and ink on watercolor, the lines are going to look very striking. The contrast is going to be very strong. But when you draw the lines first and then you paint over the lines with watercolor, I feel that the lines, they look a bit better. It looks a bit more harmonious, like it belongs to the scene. So when you're drawing like this, sometimes um, for me, I feel that it's like you're touching up a sketch. When you use pen and ink on watercolor, the lines, they actually look a bit thicker than usual. So to get the thinner lines, I have to use the back of my fountain pen. Let's draw another. Let's draw this. See what happens when you're, when you're drawing on watercolor that's not dry yet. The ink will not come out. And now I'm going to continue painting. I'm going to paint this signboard using burnt sienna and I'm going to paint the 
background behind the signboard using ultramarine. It looks like see these people here, they are almost lost. So let me just use the tissue to bring those people back again. Here as well, I want to make some areas a bit darker. And now this building here, this white building, this is actually in shade as well. A portion of this wall here is in shade. So I want to paint that in. Make sure that this line is very straight. And this wall here, this is also in shade. So I want to paint that. I use a bit too much um, ultramarine. So let me add a bit of burnt sienna to it. This line here, on this line, this edge on the left side, it should be very straight. So, they can, so that you can tell the form of this building. And the light source is coming from the left to the right. So some parts of the wall are actually lit up by the sunlight. This is the side wall. This is the side wall as well. This building is actually a hotel. I want to paint the windows here. This is a large window with smaller windows within. So I just paint this shape first. Let me paint the bottom of the trees because this is the bottom of the building. It's going to be very dark. Okay, I think this sketch is almost done. So now I can use other pens that I have to add in the details. Let's draw the railing here first. And then we'll draw the windows using the white gel pen. This is a colorful hotel with blue and purple windows. You can either paint the windows first and then use the white gel pen to draw the window frames or you can draw the window frames first like what I've done so and then paint with watercolor. Just uh, use whatever that works for you. Some of the windows are actually white in color so let me use this opaque white to paint those windows this part here as well and for the windows on the white building i'm going to be using the white gel pen okay i see some lines that i need to draw with the pen and ink the lines at the top of the windows the reason for this is because this particular line is the shadow of the edge of the window and here as well i don't think i should be drawing the individual windows so let me just draw the dividing lines some lines are closer to each other some lines are just a normal uh, window length apart For this building here, I see some, for this pink building here, for this red building here, I see some vertical patterns. So I'm going to draw some vertical lines, but I'm only going to draw the vertical lines that are closer in the foreground. So I'm going to use the back of the fountain pen again to draw those lines. As I move towards the back of this building, I'm not going to draw any more lines because I just want the lines in the on this area here in the foreground to appear. Lines that are further in the back, you don't have to draw them in or you can draw them very spaced out to give people the illusion that the lines are still there but now it's becoming uh, a bit more difficult to see them. And I think there is this uh, staircase here on the side of the building that I did not paint earlier. 
if I had drawn with the pen and ink lines earlier, I would have uh, easily marked out the areas. You see this line here that I drew with the black ink? It doesn't make sense to draw with black ink because black against black is very difficult to see. So I'm going to draw with the white gel pen. Even though from the reference photo, it doesn't look like it should be drawn with the white gel pen, but it doesn't really matter. Remember, the point of drawing sometimes is to have fun, to enjoy what you're doing. And for the areas in between, I'm going to paint them a bit darker. This sketch is almost done. I just need to add some red lights to the traffic lights. For that, I'm going to use Pyro Red. I'm going to change to a sharper brush. A brush with a sharper tip. I'm going to paint a very thick layer of pyro red here so that the red is obvious. Now this is where cadmium colors are very useful because cadmium colors they are opaque so they would cover any of the colors behind but pyro red is this is semi-opaque or semi-opaque so I need to use a lot more paint. If you use a transparent red, then it's not going to look very red because it's going to glaze over the color that is beneath. Just going to add some finishing touches. The tree trunks. I know what's missing in this sketch. There is a yellow box on the ground. So I'm going to draw that yellow box. The angle of this line is pointing in this direction. And this yellow box the line is pointing to this direction because the vanishing point is actually somewhere there and lastly this is a cross there's a yellow cross in this box and this line here this is not vertical this is tilted slightly like this and this line goes across like this I'm going to draw a very thin line, as thin as I possibly can because uh, if you look at the reference photo, it's actually really, it's actually a really thin line. And I need to keep it straight as well. Okay. Let me make this a bit thicker. Last thing before I forget is to write the name of the hotel. Now the words are actually side by side, but because my handwriting is quite wide, I have to write them top and bottom. So this is my completed sketch. This is actually the first time that I'm drawing using this style, this style of drawing with and without outlines, and I kind of like it. When I look at Liz Watkins' art, it's difficult for me to tell whether or not she drew the lines first or she drew the lines later after painting. Did she draw the lines over the watercolor or have the watercolor over the lines? But after I've painted this sketch, I realized that um, some lines should be drawn first because uh, with some of the lines that you draw first, they can help you get a sense of where the other elements are. For example, if I had drawn the lines for the windows first, the black lines, I would have a visual idea in my mind that this white building is here. If I had drawn the railings here on this hotel, I would know that this is the edge of the hotel and this area here is going to be the windows and below all this area will be the details, the main uh, front of the hotel. If I drew the people standing on the street first, I would know that this is the ground level and after I've drawn in the important lines, I can then paint over easier. If you don't draw those lines in, sometimes you may uh, draw a bit further than you actually want to, which is why I started the sketch with pencil to mark out the boundaries of the buildings. You can still see some pencil lines, but because the contrast of the graphite against the white of the paper is not as strong compared to the contrast of the colors against the paper, the ink against the paper, so your mind will just look at areas of contrast and sort of don't see the pencil lines. 
One advantage of drawing in this particular style is you actually get to save a lot of time because you don't have to draw the lines for all the elements in the scene. So I actually drew and painted this particular scene very quickly. So it's a great style for those who want a quick and loose sketch. Learning from other artists, trying to replicate the style of other artists, I think is a fantastic learning process. But don't just learn from one artist and just copy their style. Learn from as many artists as possible to develop your own style. So that's all for my tutorial today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And remember to check out more of Liz Watkins art. You can visit the links in the video description below. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.